Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to start a brand new Civ 6 run. Why, may you ask? Well, I got all excited because I opened up my YouTube feed and I saw there was a new video about civilization. I checked it out and there's some exciting news. It seems that Firaxis is kicking off a 30th year anniversary celebration for civilization. And what's even better is that they're going to have, quote, new challenges, fun surprises, and amazing offers over the next couple of months. I highly recommend you check out the video. It's pretty cool. And then there's even a message at the bottom from the godfather of Forex Games himself, Mr. Sid Meier. But on to our game. We've played a few Civ 6 games here on the channel, especially when we were first starting. And quite frankly, most of you didn't see them because this is when I just had started. I really didn't have much of a subscriber base or a community built yet. So I'm excited to see the interactions with the community when we start a new series. We're going to be going completely Randy Random style this time with random leader, shuffle the map type. We got standard on the map size and standard on the game speed. I love going with the large and huge maps, but quite frankly, it would take us a year to finish that series. We're also going with the monopolies and corporations mode because I just think it's that good. I think it should be part of the base game. Just so you can see the advanced setup, there's no special YouTube tricks here. I don't have a bunch of leaders blocked off or anything like that. There's no victory conditions unchecked. I'm pretty sure we have everything good. I guess we're going to see, though. Let's go ahead and kick it off. It's always scary when you're like, uh-oh, what leader are they going to give me this time? Looks like Randy Random has decided to give us Pakakuti and the Inca Empire. Now, whenever you're starting a new game, you always need to remind yourself of the unique features and abilities that this civilization has. Domestic trade routes. We're getting plus one food for every mountain tile in the Origin City. And we gain the Kapok non-improvement whenever foreign trade civic is discovered. Now, this is important because it means we should be directly trying to feed that growth using the Kapok non. Our other unique ability is that we are allowed to work mountain tiles and gain plus two production and an additional plus one production when the game reaches the industrial era. Our other unique ability is that we can work mountain tiles and we get plus two production and additional plus one production when we reach the industrial era and we get plus one food to mountain tiles for every adjacent terrace farm. So what this tells me is we really need to concentrate on growth. Now we did do a shuffle map type so there's no guarantee. In fact, from the looks of it, we only got the one mountain. Now, of course, on Deity, the AI already has a large advantage, but I'm loving this start. Look at all this food. Oh, this is going to be great. It definitely looks like we're going to get to push that early growth, which means amenities are going to be important. Loyalty is going to be important. I think this Grassland Hills is good enough to start in. I don't want to go any further over to the left because we're going to be relying on these few production tiles to really get going. So without further ado, let's go ahead and found it there. Yep, like we thought, we only have the one immediate mountain. Not great, but hey, we can work it. Looking at the citizen screen, it looks like we're going to be able to grab that four food and three production for now. I like working this tile at the beginning. Yeah, I, I do like these three food tiles. They're great but we really need a little bit of production to start off with. Now we are playing with better map tax, so we can do little things like throw down a campus here, and it'll tell us exactly what kind of bonuses we'll get just from the map tack, which is a beautiful tool to use. And as you can see, this is a strong starting campus. Plus five, eat your heart out. So I think this is definitely gonna be our early campus site. But for now, I don't want to make too many more decisions until we discover some of the lay of the land. I'm not even sure if we are on islands, if we're playing continents. There's no, We have no idea. That's kind of the fun of exploring it. Over into research, we're going to want to work these deer as soon as possible. So it would kind of make sense to go animal husbandry first. The other option is to go with the pottery and try to get the great bath. But let's be honest, on deity, that is next to impossible. You really have to have the stars aligned to really get some of these early wonders, especially the ones that aren't very difficult to put down. But looking at this map, wow, wouldn't it be great to be able to steal an early Entomanaki? Plus two in science, plus one production to all marsh tiles in the Empire. In fact, why don't we try to get greedy? Let's see if we can do it, which, let's be honest, chances are slim. But we'll at least give it the good old college try. In normal games, I normally start off with Scout. But being this is Deity, and I have no idea what the enemy is up to, I think we're going to go early Slinger. 
We've found our first beautiful goody hut, and it looks like this is some sort of peninsula out here. Not sure if this is land connected yet. What's the good news? Here we go. Plus one to pop. What a great start. And it does look that this is a peninsula. A couple crabs out here. This might be a decent location for another city, even though it lacks some of the fresh water. With our second citizen, I think we're going to go ahead and start with the deer. I want to get that early production. We're still going to be growing pretty well, especially considering we just got that villager pop. Look at this. We've got some more mountains down here, which this is good because it provides a nice defensive barrier from the south. Not sure what's on the other side of this range. We've discovered a new continent, which this is great because it boosts our foreign trade. We'll take it. We can go into our lenses, click on continent, and we can see where the second continent is. Looks like it's right over here. Nova Pangea. Also, more news is our slingers now up. We're definitely going to send them north. Find out what's going on. Looks like we've met Mexico City at the north here. Unfortunately, we are not the first people to meet them. Someone else has already spotted them because we didn't get that bonus envoy. I think we're going to try to get greedy. We're going to go builder first and then into settler, which is a bit greedy. And I don't see any AI right next to us. So I think I can take a few turns off of producing warriors. Pottery just completed, but we just got hit by a huge dust storm. Took our slinger down to 50% health. It also did it to Mexico City's warriors. Just in case, we're going to back them out. We don't want to lose a slinger this early in the game. That would be bad. Hopefully the dust storm doesn't come back south. The good news, the dust storm added some more fertility to these tiles. Definitely makes them more appealing. Our warriors discovered a new geothermal fissure right to the east. Plus, there's fresh water over here, so I think this would be a nice location for another city. I think after this builder, we're definitely going to go settler next. Okay, so the dust storm faded out. Not before hitting my slinger again. Luckily, the slinger has 10 health left. Let's get them healed up. I'm kind of digging this as our new city site. It is a plains hill, so we'll get the two food, two production for it. But it may even be better to go straight on to the copper. It's also a plains hill. We'll be losing the ability to work the copper, but it, it would give us the city on fresh water. And still far enough away from Cusco. These tundra tiles are not appealing at all. But there's enough tiles in here to make a city worth it. The only other real option would be this regular plains here. With the maze on it. But it's also on coastal lowland 1 meter. I don't like the idea of us getting flooded later on in the game. So because of the fresh water. I think this is going to be it here. Using the better map tax. We can hit shift A. Say hey, yep. This is where we're putting the city. We'll be able to put the campus down relatively soon. You also notice that the dust storm took down some of our hit points on our warrior as well. I don't want to lose out on the precious exploration. So we're going to move until we see a threat. And then we'll fortify and heal. At this point we have the option to explore down the range here to see what's on the other side of these mountains or we can explore the coastline and see what the borders of this what's starting to look like a large island i think we'll go ahead and explore the coastline finished up code of laws time to play our cards right we're definitely not going religion very difficult in a deity game so i think we're going to start with discipline and urban planning You'll notice that we're using the better card UI, so we are seeing the actual gains that we get by putting these cards in. With Code of Laws complete, it's time to add another Civic, and I definitely think we're going to go foreign trade on this one. A, we've already got the inspiration for it, but B, remember, as the Incan, we love those domestic trade routes, and we're soon going to have a second city, so that would be great. In the meantime, we might even be able to throw it to Mexico City. Looks like we've met our first AI buddy. Let's see if he wants to sample some hospitality. He says yes. Now, this is important because you want to build good relationships with your nearby neighbors, especially at the start of the game in Deity. Otherwise, they're just going to take their huge production bonuses and start throwing them at you in the form of warriors and archers and whatever uniques they have. Now, the Byzantines, their unique ability is they have stronger troops whenever they convert a holy city to their religion. They also get a plus one great profit point from their holy district site. This doesn't look like something that's going to really affect us, other than the fact that if he gets strong and then comes after us. Their unique and special unit is a naval ship, the Dromon, which replaces the Quadream. Now, unfortunately, Basile's heavy and light cavalry do full damage against cities following the same religion. That could be detrimental in the early game. And his unique unit is the medieval era knight, which is very strong. So we want to make sure we're friends with him, at least until we have the tech advantage so his knights don't absolutely crush us. 
We go ahead and, head and send them an early delegation. It costs us 25 gold, but we're trying to show them that we're buddies, right? Look at that. We got a plus three because we sent them a delegation. Now, his first impression of us is not great. Probably because we don't start with four settlers or whatever like they do. Don't be rude. And just like that, we have a new barbarian outpost close to our city. We are ready for some new production. And we did promise settler. I think we have to go settler. But man, it'd be good to have another couple of units, wouldn't it? We're going to go with another warrior before we hit that settler. By then, we'll also be population three, which will help our growth and our production speed working this. And that way, we'll be able to churn out that settler a little bit quicker. But with the creation of the barbarian outpost and our new friends, we need to make sure that we're strong enough to even support two cities. Our builder here... We don't have that animal husbandry yet because we're trying to rush a stupidly quick eddy, which it's not going to happen. We're probably going to shoot ourselves in the foot for this, but we definitely want to improve this beautiful farm here. More bad news. We just found another barbarian slinger over here. No doubt they've seen us and they're going to come and start shooting. Nice. Look at this. We found Signy. This beautiful natural wonder will give us plus one culture and plus one science to adjacent tiles. Not too shabby. It also gives us that astrology boost. We'll take it. Builder just put down a farm. We'll get the boost to irrigation. Nice little marsh farm here. We've escaped the slinger to the south. Now we need to find a nice little spot and heal up before they come back at us. I think our slinger is going to go pop over here. See what's going on with this barbarian. Our warrior will be out soon and they can also reinforce. Well, hello, Peter. It's an honor to meet you too. Yeah, well, let's exchange some ideas for capitals. Where are you? You were right over here. This isn't too shabby. Looks like we have a lot of space in here. Unfortunately, it's a lot of tundra, which is not normally great. We do need to take this opportunity, though. I think we're going to plop right here on this hill, so it's a nice, strong defensive position in case that slinger comes back. And then we'll heal here for a little bit. Next up for our builder, you can see that we have our warrior going to be finished next turn. Well, so is riding, and which means we have access to the eddy. But we really need to get that first settler out. The disadvantage being that we're going to be delayed a little bit longer before we can even start the eddy, which means the AI is probably going to get it before us. But with this many marsh around, we have to at least try. Now the settler is only 10. Let's see if we can make that a little bit better. Or we can cancel this growth here. We can definitely work this stone. And that should help at least a little. But now that we've completed writing, we can now go nab our animal husbandry. Because we want to at least reveal the horses and we'll also be able to work that deer. Looks like the Barbarian Outpost has some pointy boys. Pointy boys are coming in on us. Not too shabby. We'll be just fine, especially considering the warriors coming in too. We'll, uh, we'll lop some stuff at them for now. Second hit brought the slingers down a little bit, but now they're ready for a beautiful promotion. And the warriors are coming in to reinforce. Oh, and down goes the Barbarians to our beautiful slingers. And we got the boost to archery. That is wonderful. And there it is. We've driven the barbarians away. Additional error score and some gold and the boost to military tradition. Now we're only two away from our normal age. Oh, look at this. And now we have some positive favor from Basil. We need to go ahead and check on that relationship now. As a matter of fact, oh, it looks like he's... Now he has a plus six to us. The plus six is probably because we killed the barbarians for him. I think it's too early to try to declare a friendship. We could try. Yeah, we're not worthy enough yet. Oh, Peter's not loving us, though. Minus four for an unknown reason. Let's try to send that delegation. He cannot accept. He's being, he's being staunch about it. We'll be able to fix that a little bit when we get early empire. Because then we can offer them open borders. And by offering open borders, it improves the relationship a little bit. So our next tech is probably going to go in straight into early. We can't forget it for too long, but we're going to need military traditions, flanking, and support combat bonuses. Definitely don't want to forget about those. Now that that barbarian outpost is gone, we'll start sending these folks back up north. Got to be a little bit careful as Quadrium. Yep. Just as we thought. Silly little quadrim. One turn away until we can finally tap into the deer. Skip for now. Cross our fingers for some horsey boys. And it doesn't look like we found any horsey boys. Just realized that we had found Lake Titicaca. You can't go on a YouTube video and fail to mention the words Lake Titicaca. 
finished with animal husbandry. We we do have the stone there. It would be worth putting a mine up, but I think it's probably best that we get archery first, just in case there's any early aggression. But then again, the mining would help. If we were able to build that mine, it would actually help by building our eddy. All right, so let's go mining into archery. Our builder just built the... What is it, camp for deer? Yeah, we just built the camp, so now we get another two gold, which is going to be great. We're at 145, so we'll be able to actually buy our next unit. We got one turn for the settler to come out, and then we can go straight into the eddy. Looks like Basil just finished Stonehenge, too. So this is, again, this is risky, but it's not too bad. Now the question is, where do we want to put it? It'd be nice putting it somewhat close, because we'd have other districts to get the adjacency bonus off of it let's go into our map tax before we pick so let's hypothetically say that we put the eddy here we could do something like this which doesn't really have anything to do with the eddy but the harbor and the commercial hub bonuses plus two on each not great but the primary focus here is obviously going to be the campus so i don't think much else matters with us discovering this new mountain range, though, it, we could get another two out of this campus by putting it here, but it'd be a little bit longer until we were able to get there. Or what we might be able to do is put a city over here and tap into double campuses, a campus here and a campus here. We'll see how that goes. For now, though, we definitely need to look for this settler. I think we are going to stick to the original location of the copper. Since it's right over the way, I, I feel okay with settling a settler by themselves, but our beautiful... Slinger is going to be heading that way anyways. So I guess it's time to put down the eddy. Now somehow we lost a food. I did not see what had happened. It couldn't have been off of growth. We were working this. This is minus. So basically what you need to realize is every citizen requires two food. So we were working two, four. We had enough for three right here. Just be from the palace and these two tiles. So I'm not 100% sure what happened. 27 is a long time. We really needed that growth. Peter's become disappointed that we have little science and culture. Hey, Peter, it's turn 29. Will you give me a break, please? It looks like our friends Basil's put another city here, which probably means this is going to be locked up tight. My guess is the city center is here. So one, two, three, one, two, three. It's going to be too tight there. With this last builder build, we could build the K-Pak Nun. It would allow us to move through there and trade routes going through there. I think it's just international. Well, they multiply the gold if they use them not a huge deal and our trader from this city here is not going to be going through that mountain center anyways so i don't think we're going to use our last builder charge with that probably going to save it for the mining now good news is that we have a river here which means these tiles aren't completely bogus being that they're in tundra we'll have to keep exploring them maybe this is where city three or city four goes all right we are one tile away i'm glad these are linked up but this barbarian scout has the option to try to hit the scout here or us so there's the ai city and unless i'm mistaking he actually built it without any fresh water i don't think there's a river here but we'll keep exploring around anyways we found the other barbarian encampment they've already have another barbarian out and a scout but we have our slinger here and our warrior we should be able to take care of that pretty easily oh wow another geothermal fissure this is definitely making this area a little bit more interesting and we've got our second city down beautiful and since it's a coastal city we got our bonus to sailing this is all good i think we're gonna go ahead and do trader first and then we'll do nothing but units coming out of those i think with this many units around we can just go straight in now this first bite will hurt so we'll wait until next turn we'll move in be able to take a single shot two turns till we have mining can't wait for that to happen now i would want to explore further up here but i don't want to get my warriors stuck because all it would take is them to finish early empires, lock their borders down, and then fill in these gaps. We might still be able to go through Mexico City, but I don't want to take any chances. And it, since it looks like this is a heavily water map, we're going to have to go Navy here soon anyways. And our Navy can do a lot of our exploration. These fools just left their encampment. Uh, I think I will kind of a waste of error score because i don't think we'll be able to get the gold in this early but let's definitely move down here to support we want to stay out of range of this slinger but now that we are in the forest they should attack into us at great loss yeah we'll move the slinger in here no problem weaken up the spearmen 
Little pointy boys going down, and that's the way it's done. Finally, with the mine. And we get the bonus for craftsmanship and masonry. Look at that. Let's go ahead and check our citizens. Now we have the three production coming out of it, which is great. We have the two coming out of here. Five more turns, we'll have another one. We have enough cash to buy something, right? So we could buy a builder for this city. Maybe improve the maze. That seems like a good idea. We could also just buy the trader. Of course, I don't want to buy the trader at full price, considering we've already got some production in it. So let's just go ahead and buy the builder. Our enemies are far enough away from us to where we will still have time to be able to build a respectable army before they get to us. Well... Famous last words, right? Let's go ahead and weaken these boys up, and then we'll follow it up with a nice melee assault. And goodbye, Slinger boys. Looks like Basil has sent us a delegation. It's most welcome, buddy. Thank you. Are we ready to be friends yet? Oh, look, he's got a smiley face. More opportunity for error score. We're going to be able to build our terrace farm, which is plus two food and plus one housing on this hill. Gives us four error score, and now the tile is a three food and two production, which is absolutely beautiful. All right, so we got that third citizen, so we're going to put him onto this tile here. It's got the three food and one production, which we need. We needed at least two food out of this. You can see we only have a two food surplus. So if we put in, for instance, in this tile, we would actually lose. And that must have been what happened last time. Huge mistake early game. And it only took, apparently, like a single tile, because we didn't even get the starvation warnings out of the city. So this has got me a little nervous. He's got two warriors coming down here. His total military strength is 194, which is quite a bit larger than us. We do have some slinger boys, and we're about to finish archery, so uh, we'll see. But just in case, we're going to send our warriors and our slinger back up. Oh yeah, he's definitely boosted military. You can see he's now at 262. I think we're going to go ahead and chop these woods. The worst comes to worst, we'll be able to put a terrace farm on them, but the chopped wood should help us get to Eddie quicker. Took off three turns, so now we only have six turns left. Because we're getting nervous about Basil sending an attack, we're going to put into masonry, maybe even be able to get some ancient walls. Our trader is finished, but the thing we're going to do now is transfer him to another city, because we want the bonuses for Cusco, not for our other city. So we'll move him there. Next turn, we'll be able to send him to Wilka. Oh, now he's got a spear boy. Yeah, he's definitely attacking soon. Oh, and look at that. We lost the Yeti. Five turns. Five turns is what we lost it by. But now we have a ton of extra production. I think we're going to instantly put it into an archer. Because it looks like we're going to need it. And we'll also upgrade this slinger to an archer. Now, I'm going to make the mistake and go monument next. Because we need that cultural growth. To be able to get early empire online, to be able to get our plus 50% production on settlers. Because I don't want to start churning out settlers until they become really cheap. So we'll get the monument first. We're consolidating all of our army over here. So I'm not feeling too worried about this threat right now unless... And there it is. We weren't surprised, buddy. We weren't surprised. Now, lucky for us, we have... Plenty of units. It looks like our trader is going to get pillaged. This is going to be okay here. We will switch the archer and the warrior. The archer will be able to make that first. Nice pop. Same goes over here, but I think it might be advantageous for us to move on to the hills before taking that shot. Because it'd be a better defensive position. Actually, no. Look at this. This is actually a plains hill. It just doesn't look like it because of the geothermal fissure. So yeah, we're definitely going to take our pop shot there. But unfortunately, it also blocks the way. So our warrior will not be able to support. Looks like he didn't want to take the advantage of pillaging the trader. He wanted to go directly at Cusco. This is fine with me because we're actually going to move up one. And then take the pop shot so the warrior can also get through. I think the AI has overextended themselves. We're actually going to hit the spearman here and then... Go right after this warrior. Now any attacks that these two units make into the city will result in their death. New era time. Looks like we're heading into a normal age. 
both of our neighbors are naturally in golden ages. And I think we're going to go free inquiry because I think we're going to get our campuses up and then be building science buildings. We're not founding a new religion. We're not going to get too many specialty districts. And we're definitely not going to trigger too many inspirations. So we'll take free inquiry. And I believe this is going to end their assault for now. We've managed to take out both of their warriors. So now all that's left is one spear boy. Where you going, buddy? Where you going? Why are you running away? And we can still hit him from downtown. And the spearman is dead. Ain't no attack like a counterattack. Let's see what kind of damage we can do at Trebi. Now, it's probably not much. From the looks of it, he has a lot more military strength. So we will see what's going on here. So we weren't able to grab Eddie, which is completely disheartening. I think we're going to go into irrigation next. We're not too close to getting these grapes, but we can also just buy that tile and work those grapes. We don't have a single luxury resource yet, and it would be helpful. Beautiful. We have early empire, so we're instantly going to go into bonus production for settlers. And with that bonus and settlers, we can now just start churning them out. Now, the question is, do we churn them out in Wilka? Or do we do it in Cusco? Cusco definitely has the higher production. 10 versus 6.3. But our settlers would have a lot further to walk over here plus we need the walls all right so let's go walls first and then for our civics we're gonna try to nab that political philosophy i hate that we haven't met three city states yet which is really a bummer because the 40 percent off political philosophy is strong we do get our first governor though and i have a personal fan favorite for pingala i love the bonuses that you get from science and culture so we're gonna go ahead and appoint Pingala and Cusco, and I think it's also going to help the loyalty here. Maybe pushing some extra loyalty on Trebi over there. Now, we're going to keep driving up our archers and our warriors. Because, uh, yeah, we're definitely going to give him a taste of his own medicine. And it doesn't look like he has walls up in Trebi, which means we have an opportunity to actually steal that city from him. On the tech side, we're going to go see if we have any iron. We did not have any horses, which rather stinks. So I'm hoping we do have iron. And it would make sense. We're around plenty of mountains. Our next archer is finished, and Wilka brings us to an 84 strength. It's not high enough, so we're also going to throw them over there, and we'll get started on another settler. After that settler, we'll probably go back to another archer, and then to campus. I don't want to delay too long on these strong campuses. We're definitely going to go with Agoje now, plus 50% towards production on ancient and classical era units. That'll help us turn out even more of our archers. Oh yeah, this is ripe for the taking. I don't see any walls going up. You can see we're building ancient walls and it, and it shows the ancient walls graphic. Whereas here, it does not look like they have any construction going on in there. So now we just start shelling. Yes, step into my archer's trap. It looks like they leveraged some units from a nearby city. I don't think it's Mexico City because all of these units are still... Mexico cities, so it must be another city-state up north. Looks like we did find some iron. Great for us. It's the only one we see on the map, which is not difficult because we don't have a lot of map vision yet. Now, we might be able to get a Machu Picchu. Normally, the wonders that have a restriction on where it can be built are a little easier to get, and we want to head towards Crossbowmen in anyways, so let's go ahead and go pick up Engineering. It'll take wheel first, which is fine. We might be able to put down a good Machu Picchu. Basil's offering us peace. Don't think we're going to take it. He is willing to even pay for it. The reason why we're not going to take it is because this city still has no walls. If this city had walls, we'd have no chance of taking it, especially with all these units he keeps producing. But we have a beautiful archer trap right here. And it's just, as soon as they move somebody into it, they just die. We have our next settler up, and I think we're actually going to go next to Lake Titicaca, like the AI is suggesting. First, because we're already seeing loyalty pressure down here, so we want to be able to counteract that loyalty. Now, it's a smidge further away than I like, so possibly this tile here. It's got the furs here, some deer. It's not absolutely horrible. We've got another settler here. I'm really not digging how fractured our empire would be because of this mountain range now i know we can put the kapok nons in there to kind of make the traveling a little easier but these aren't great sites now this did have some river locations here 
We have a volcano right smack dab in the middle. We do have some very strong campuses, though, thanks to a bunch of geothermal fissures. So I think we will head down here for this one. And this time we have a warrior to escort us. There is some barbarians playing their games down here somewhere. And I just don't want to get too close to it. We have met Ethiopia. Welcome. Now Basil has gotten some horsemen. And at about the horseman stage, there's not much you can do. You can see this combat does not fare well into our archer bombardment. He took out an archer the turn he was spawned. So I think we're going to try to sue for peace now. He doesn't have too many units left. He's down to 101, which for an AI is pretty low. Let's see what we can milk him for. Looks like we're going to be able to get him for 12 gold per turn, plus 9 gold. We'll take it, and it'll protect our units as they make their, their exit. We got 30 turns of peace to look forward to. And with that, I think this is a good spot to close out this episode. If you see anything better that we can do with this settler, this area looks okay, but we can backfill that position. And it also is going to be affected by flooding eventually in the world. There's not a ton of tiles around it, so it would have to be strictly a coastal city. This one at least had a couple of... It has truffles and furs and deer. It has some beautiful adjacencies. Thanks to this natural wonder. We know Russia is going to be coming around this area. The only reason that might help us that Peter may advance the other direction is because this is a lot of nothing. And it goes a lot of nothing and snow and is bad tundra for a little while. And normally the AI likes to connect their cities this early in the game. But we want to fill this all area. I see another city here, one here, and then probably one here for at least three more cities which would put us on six, which I feel decent playing a tall game with six cities. We will see. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments below. I look forward to playing it again. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you soon.